going on YouTube uh, I'm just out here breaking my own rules you know I um, sitting out here and I realize that I'm always on my phone or I'm looking at the weather check in my email or messenger or uh, trying to trying to do something there's always and I know I'm not the only one out there but um, there's always something going on and I just wanted to say that shoot a video because I was walking around it's really clear out it's a beautiful sunny day 75 you know, and I, and I just almost feel like normal, you know, not fully normal or anything, but I know that one of my problems is that I need to just like not be on my phone and be, just be out here. And even when I go walking with my group, I'm talking to people. Or if I'm out here, I'm on my phone, and right now I'm, I'm shooting a video. I started walking in a couple circles with my dogs around here. They're running around, you know, sniffing and, and looking, exploring. And uh, my mind is somewhere else. I had a, um, it's funny, I had a girl. Um, a friend of mine's daughter the other day had asked me, she said, um, I said I lost my mind, you know, I was just joking around and she said where is it and I said because I had um, I thought I might have lost my keys and I was like Well, they're thinking about my keys And there's a lot of truth to that right so I was like I'm out here at a park But I'm not here at the park You're there with people, but you're not really there and I've done this as a coping mechanism ever since I got, you know, like all detached and stuff because it's like, it helps, it helps ground you. It's like an anchor. Like if you could just, for me, it's like focus on that or if I'm reading an article or doing something, then it keeps me away from my mind, which always is saying, hey, how do you feel right now? It's checking in. How do you feel right now? Do you feel normal? Do you feel attached? Why don't you feel attached? Do you feel better than yesterday? Why don't you feel better than yesterday? Or do you feel better than yesterday? Why do you feel better than yesterday? Did you sleep better? Did you take something different? Did you eat something? This is the kind of stuff that's been going on ever since I got sick because I have the kind of mind that, that a lot of people like me have. It really takes the kind of mind that I have to actually get the condition that I have. If I didn't have that deep analytical process of trying to solve puzzles, I wouldn't be in this mess. Because if I wasn't constantly thinking and checking in, I would be normal. And that's the thing. You know, that Paul David talks about is giving up the puzzle. And I can't get over, you know, medication is definitely helps, you know, help me get out and do and try to do things and get better. but. Um, it's conditioning and I didn't even know it I was conditioning myself to, to, to stay grounded through through conversations on the phone or um, and now even conversations in real life or a video game or a movie or a show or or anything just anything but you know smelling the flowers as it were and I know I'm not alone in this. Even normal people, even the sevens out there do the same thing, right? They do the same thing. Because our culture has driven us that way. And for people like me or us, it just, it's fuel for the fire because when I first got sick, as in anybody gets sick, when I got sick physically, I had the same response. When I got sick mentally, I got the same response. In my mind, it says, what's wrong but that's natural because what else is it going to say you got a splinter in your foot it's going to say bing 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 what's wrong get the splinter out of your foot get your hand off the stove so it's instinctual somatic response to feeling uncomfortable 
Um, now we're like, okay, I have a headache. Let me take an aspirin. Let me take, or if you're natural, you know, in the natural, let me take a turmeric. Or if you're like me, I'll take both, you know. Um, but and I'm always trying to find that reason, that root cause. And, and there's definitely truth to a lot of it. I'm not going to sit here and say that you have a shitty night's sleep and you feel bad the next day. Everybody feels bad the next day after a bad sleep. You know, there's some certain there's certain things that we all have in common, even with normal people. And when I say normal people, maybe you know what I mean. But, um, you know, and, and I'm out here, but I'm not out here. I'm talking to a phone. You're listening to a phone. A guy on a phone. It's trippy. That's not the presence. I'm trying to talk to you in the future. And you're listening to me from the past. Hoping to gain some wisdom or some insights. And maybe you do. But I'm not here... I'm not right here, the grass, the honeysuckles. I was for a minute and then I thought, I need to shoot a video about this. We need to be there, we need to be here and it's uncomfortable to be there. When you're in pain, you don't wanna feel the pain. You wanna take something, you wanna do something. And when you're mentally in pain, you can distract yourself. And if you can distract yourself enough, if you can get into Netflix and binge watch and you forget about it and you're not hyper vigilant, if you could focus on something else instead of how you feel. And I don't know if there's anybody else out there like me. Well, actually, I know there are. Some people, though, this, you know, they're too busy. They have kids, they have families, and blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of like, okay, I, I feel floaty. I don't feel clear-headed. I feel like brain fog all the time. But I ain't got time to worry about that stuff. I think everybody almost in America has that and they don't worry about it. Someone like me though, I'm trying to solve it. I'm trying to solve it all the time. I'm trying to say, what is causing it? What is keeping it going? And half the answer is that I'm not present. But I'm not present because I had so many years of trauma that the present moment was so bad. So when the present moment's so bad, when you're in constant fear, constant pain, abused, um, living a trauma, traumatic situation, the present moment is the last place you wanna be. But it's the only thing that exists. Everything else is just distracting us from the present moment where the, where the healing and reality is. And sometimes the healing is the most uncomfortable place. But if you stay stuck, if you stay in the house, you're not going to heal. You got to find the balance. And you got to feel uncomfortable. If you're lifting weights and you never feel the burn or you never feel anything, you know, no pain, no gain, whatever, then you're probably not going to gain muscle. Everything in life that we do is the same way. And this is what my message is today. And that's what I am saying. That in the same token, though, we have to have balance. You cannot... I'm not a big workout guy. But, but I do run. I used to run, anyway, a lot. And you can't run every day. You can't run 20 miles a day. You cannot. I tried it. And I burned out and became a vegetable for months. I couldn't even move. Mentally, physically, I became completely destroyed. You cannot run 20 miles a day. You cannot lift weights every single day. Then you injure yourself and then you can't ever lift weights again or for a very long time. Like when I threw my arm out and I loved throwing the football. I went six months without being able to throw the football. That's what I'm talking about. That's just, I mean, that's the analogy. I mean, it's in your face. That's what you have to do. Is find balance. Because like I said, you got to work at it. You got to push yourself. But guess what? 
my mind is racing so much all the time. It's just spinning up here. It's just spinning. I mean, you can probably, look, you can see the steam just probably coming off my head. But we're racing inside our own heads. We're racing in our heads. We're, ra we're not here. I hear the birds. I'm not here with them. I'm not here with my dog. I'm here with you and you don't exist. You're not even real. You're in the future. We have to give our mind a break. And I don't know how to do that fully because when I try to give my mind a break, find peace or silence, I think about all the uncomfortable things. And the only way to truly heal from that, that I've come to understand, is acceptance and surrender to say, okay, I feel floaty, okay, I feel weird, okay, I, all those things. And then don't grab the phone, and don't call someone, don't get distracted, don't focus on something else. Just stay in the pain. It was the same thing with my bladder, it's called paradoxical relaxation, and it's accepting the pain. To get through it, you have to accept it. The easiest path to the other side is straight through. And sometimes it's not what we think it's gonna be. And sometimes the right road takes a long time to find. And it's taken me damn near a decade to find it. And I'm on the right road, but guess what? It's windy, it's hilly. And I go up, and then I go right back down. And then I think, am I on the right road? I thought I was. But then every now and then I'll see a post, and I'll see a sign, and I'll say, okay, yeah, I'm still on the right road. I'll look up at the sun, pumping gas, and I'll have that window that they talk about where I just feel okay. And I'm like, I never, I haven't felt this okay in a long time. And then, it, and then it, it disappears. It's gone in five seconds or 10 minutes or 30 minutes. And I have to remember, I wake up in the morning and I feel okay. And then I get out of bed and I fall apart, but I feel okay for a little while. There was years that I did not. And I go to bed sometimes and I stare at the ceiling and I feel okay and I feel normal and I feel... I feel like somebody, I feel like everything is just clicking together and that's because my mind isn't racing as much. I'm not thinking about all the things that I should be doing, that other people are doing. They're out there working, they're out there being, they're out there traveling and all the things that I want to do. They're not out there doing that. I'm not out there doing that. And at night everybody's going to bed, everyone's calming down, my cortisol levels are lower. So maybe that's why, I don't, I don't really know, but sometimes at night I feel better, sometimes I don't, sometimes I have bad anxiety, but, or bad depression, but some nights I feel okay, and, I, and then I have to say, well, for years I didn't have a window, and for years there wasn't a minute that I felt okay, there wasn't even one minute that I felt okay for years. And now I'm having moments here and there in the mornings and randomly, if I push myself and I hang out with a friend or I get the right meds in my system or whatever it has to be, maybe after a run. But anyway, my message is don't beat yourself up if you're not feeling great or if you felt better and you're feeling worse or if you haven't felt better forever, you're going to feel better, you're going to get better. You got to find the right resources, you got to get on the right road, you got to accept, you got to surrender. You've got to give your mind a break, but you also got to push yourself, you know, to be in whatever capacity that you're trying to do, whether it's just go to the mailbox or go to the store or, you know, if you have that really bad anxiety, or maybe it's the depression side of things, or maybe you just have social anxiety and you just need to start somewhere and find a group or a support or a friend that's new that you could talk to. But you're never gonna heat you're never gonna number one strengthen that part of you if you don't use it. You're gonna have apathy, just like a muscle that you never use. And if you overuse it, it's the same thing. You gotta find that balance. Alright then. Good luck guys. Stay sane.